host team has its day of glory in the two-man bob. The Italians make it 1-2 in the spine-tingling event. Fifth and sixth spots went to the American sleds, piloted by Bud Washburn and Art Tyler. Trying to avoid a spill, brakeman Ed Seymour twisted his knee. Another Olympic casualty. The Italian sled, skippered by Lamberto Della Costa, roars around the final turn and into the stretch, wrapping things up with a second sizzling heat. A popular victory for sure in the snowball village of Cortina. of thrills in the Winter Olympics at Cortina et Empezzo. Here are the four men bombs hurtling down the treacherous mountain run. Four men... Freaks. The women's giant slalom get... Benham and Pat Martin of the U.S. team get away. And then it's a head-snapping start for the favored German two-man Bob, piloted by Andreas Osler. On a sleet-coated hillside just outside Oslo, pilot and brake man risk their necks on the newly built bobsled run. Benham and Martin are second, as Osler wins his country's first Olympic gold medal since 1936. Contrary to custom, the formal opening of the Winter Games takes place a day late at Bislett Stadium in Oslo. Over 1,100 athletes from 30 nations are competing in the Winter Classic, the biggest ever. A crowd of 30,000 is in the big stadium as the American team, largest contingent in this snow and ice spectacle, parades on the ice. A perilous footing for a parade. <laughs> That is the goal at which we aim in sport as in life. Thus the commentator in the official film of the 1948 Winter Olympics. Because of the war, no one had ridden the Cresta for eight years, and so no one knew quite what to expect. For Britain, John Crammond was strongly tipped. In the event, Britain could only manage the bronze once more. Amazingly, the silver medalist from 20 years before, the American Jack Heaton, was competing again. And again, came second. A 19-year-old Italian, Nino Bibia, in only his second season, took the gold. 
It was the start of a remarkable career that was to last well into the 80s. It was Lord Brabazon in those lean post-war years who saved the Crestor from melting away like the snow in spring. Cabinet minister under Churchill, holder of the first private pilot's license in Britain, and all-round sportsman, he kept the Crestor going by sheer determination. In a rare interview, Hugh Thomas asked Brabazon when he first rode the Crestor. I think I started on my honeymoon when I, in 1907, when I was 23. This is about 50 odd years then. Too many. Too many. Why do men go down the crest, do you think? Well, that's very difficult to answer, but uh, you see a toboggan, you see the run, you say to yourself very naturally, why can't I go down as fast as anybody else? How old were you when you uh, last went down the crest? <laughs> Tom Petzl in Italy. ABC's Wide World of Sports is here to cover the World Championship in bobsleds. Now, this is a two-part competition. Last Sunday, the two-man bobsleds were concluded, and at a later date on Wide World, you'll see that competition. Today, a tragedy occurred in the four-man sled, and because of it, we're not going to be showing you the competition as we normally do. The driver of the American sled, Jim Morgan, of Saranac Lake, New York, was fatally injured in a crash on his first run today. By a terrible quirk, really, his brother, John Morgan, has been working with us for the last 10 days as our expert on bobsleds. In fact, John was very apprehensive about the run today, simply because it's unusually warm here in Cortina, and the track was getting very slick. And by the luck of the draw, the United States sled was the last one to run. This was just moments before the start. Jim Morgan here, the driver, saying words of encouragement to his team members. Hey, give me a hand here. And before the run, the Italian television cameras showed the drapes that had been put up to help shield the curves from the warm sun. In fact, as the camera panned over, you'll see how slick it was in that high corner. The Americans were ready. Jim Morgan, the driver, calling the commands to set. They rock, and then they start the count. One, two, three. Morgan, the driver, the first in the sled, followed by... Jeff Yost, Paul White, and Randy Bielski. Pretty good start, 549, considering the more difficult footing. This pushing off has been an area the Americans have been a little bit weak in, but they've been working hard to get a smooth, coordinated start. Just a slight hesitation there, getting in by Paul White. Otherwise, very, very good. And then, this was the way that John Morgan and I called the rest of the American run. In order for this United States sled to move into ninth place ahead of Great Britain, they're going to have to have a clocking of 1.14.38. Let's watch the intermediate time. He looked good so far. He had a very good start. Not bad in the labyrinths for Jimmy. Let's look for the intermediate, Bill. 45.77. That's slower than the British time, but... Uh, Jimmy is not one to hold back on the lower end of the course. Yeah, again, his nickname is Nitro, so I don't think he's going to hold back at all. He's got the last sled down in this heat, Bill, and the track conditions aren't to his advantage. But let's see what he can do with it. That's Cristallo. All right, the British team was 104.54 out of uh, Cristallo. And let's see what the final time is. Get to finish. Get off to finish. Oh, oh, oh. Same thing as USA 1. Thank God they did it in the finish and not up top, though, Bill. 115-11, 343-87, and they took really a, a hard wallop as it caromed off the one wall into the retaining side. Let's let's uh, take a look. I think I want to see. Okay. I, I want to look for heads here. I see three heads bobbing. Looks like Jimmy might have been. The driver always gets the worst of it yeah. in this situation, Bill. But. Uh, it's crazy to get these people up. It was apparent that someone in the sled was seriously hurt. It became more apparent after we viewed the slow motion of the final curve. The sled came off high. And then it seemed to bounce violently to the right, slamming into the guardrail. The force was so great that the driver's neck was broken. And we were to learn later that he had died instantly. However, in the hopes that he could be saved, Every effort was made to get him to the hospital as quickly as possible. Two doctors were in attendance, and they tried for 20 minutes in the operating room to revive him. Finally, at 10.20 a.m., he was pronounced dead. It's always very difficult to report news of this kind, especially when it concerns a person that you've known. 
The only thing that can be said was that Jim Morgan was happiest when he was driving a bobsled. This is Bill Fleming reporting from Cortina d'Ampezzo in Italy. All of us at ABC Sports would like to extend our deepest sympathies to the family and the friends of Jim Morgan. In the sport of bobsled racing, a fast, well-coordinated start is a must. Without it, it's a disaster. If a sled does get a good start, and the driver can keep a solid track down the run, the ride can be fast and exhilarating. A real joy to a smooth-running crew. It can be a nightmare to the inexperienced sledders, such as the Republic of China competing here for the first time in world competition. This is not a gentle sport. It is not a sport for the faint of heart. The Russians are also making their debut in world competition, and they too suffered embarrassment and a few bruises. As you can see, it's a sport full of surprises, and you'll see a world championship contested today in the two-man bobsleds at Cortina d'Ampezzo on ABC's Wide World of Sports. This is the typical church in the center of a European town. This village happens to be Cortina d'Ampezzo, located in the northern part of Italy, nestled in the Dolomite Mountains, long regarded as one of the truly great resort areas of the world. People come here for winter sports, for summer sports, and they're here this particular weekend to enjoy bobsledding. I'm Bill Fleming. I've always been really fascinated by the sport of bobsledding, simply because it takes so much skill. The world's longest run is located, and that makes for danger. Whenever you have a long and tortuous run with big high bank curves, you can run into trouble, even with a little mistake, as the West German sled found out. This West German number two sled, driven by Eidenschink with Geiger in the rear, came into the labyrinth a little late. A small overcorrection, the air kept magnifying. And then there was nothing but disaster from that moment on, resulting in the West German sled being eliminated from the competition, as well as being badly damaged. Now, what makes this course challenging and particularly dangerous? Well, let's find out from our expert on bobsledding, John Morgan. John, what is it? Is it length? Yes, the, as you mentioned, the track is the longest track in the world. And what happens here is these drivers are used to 55-second races. And on this course, a minute 15 seconds is about the average time. So an extra 20 seconds these drivers are encompassing. And this is very, very, very mentally exhausting, especially in that last 20 seconds. And in that last 20 seconds, Bill, they encompass five of the largest corners in the world. And that's where we've seen all our problems all week long, is in this bottom part of the course. Well, you know, John, I think they're thinking about those five corners coming out of the labyrinth. They go around Bandion, then they have to think about the big left-hand turn at Antello, the right-hand turn at Cristallo, and then the big right-hand turn at Arrivo, the finish. They reach their maximum speeds, nearly 70 miles an hour, when they come into that final 90 degrees, and it's proved to be the most troublesome of all for most of the drivers. Now, earlier, John Morgan went down to that final corner to explain why it's so tricky. Bill, the problem is... It's tranquil setting is Cortina D'Ampezzo here in the Dolomites. Now, at the end of three runs, with one run to go, let's take a look at the standings. In third place, the East German number two sled, driven by... Run, the team of Jeff Yost and Frank Hansen. Frank Hansen, the brakeman here, 28 years old, a bartender from Albany, New York. And his driver, Jeff Yost, 33 years old, a New York State trooper from Burke, New York. This is his first world championship competition as a driver, although he's been on three teams as a brakeman. One, two, three, go! Good explosion off the start. Both of these guys are really good athletes. Shows to the offseason, plays a lot of rugby to stay in shape. Anson works out with quite a bit of weights. Pretty competitive start time, Bill. 540, that's two hundreds better than the Great Britain team. And the reason I mentioned that is because the United States is trying to hang on to 11th place and they're getting a lot of pressure from the Great Britain sled behind them. Good explosion on the start, as I mentioned now, and you see Hansen not waving his head too much. He's got good uh, velocity behind him now. Yost will have a good hard step, his last push. Good competitive start. 
The overall time that the United States sled needs is 117.01 to stay in 11th place in the standings. And I think we can keep you abreast of how they're doing as they come down the course by giving you their intermediate times. Here, here's one now. 46-17, that's 42 hundredths better than the team from Great Britain, so they're doing very well. Oh, he was doing very well right there, Bill, but he came down not too patient on that corner, pulled out a little early. Here he comes into the big two corners. Let's see if he sets himself up early. He does. Gets in and tell all where he wants, comes off into Cristallo. Let's look for the time. And here we go with the time, uh, 10640, that's 900. Well, the East Germans are ecstatic with their 1-2 finish, and they long will remember their triumph here in tiny Cortina D'Ampezzo, which, by the way, could very well be the site of the 1988 Winter Olympics. Cortina's bid has been accepted by the IOC, along with Calgary, Canada, and Falun, Sweden. A final decision on that site will be made by the International Olympic Committee at their September meeting in Baden-Baden, West Germany. Now, when you take a look at the map of Europe, it's very apparent that Winter Olympic sites are concentrated in a rather small area. Cortina in 56, San Moritz in Switzerland in 28 and 48, Innsbruck, Austria in 64 and 76. And then, of course, a new one on the scene will be Sarajevo, Yugoslavia, 1984, which ABC will be covering. And who knows, we might be back in Cortina in 1988. And now the awards are taking place at the awards ceremony stand. The East Germans members won.